Yo, man. You got any of the good stuff? You a cop? Do it look like a cop to you? Alright, alright, alright. How much you need? I just need one man. That's all I need for the day. Alright, show me the money. Alright, man. I'm gonna get my man. Yeah. Alright, sweet. Alright, here's your cocaine. Coke? What, I look like a junkie to you? I just need some mean cards. Alright, so before this video starts, please leave a like. Also, subscribe to the channel if you're not yet. Also, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Discord. All links will be in the description. Now, let's move on with the video. Alright, so a little disclaimer before the video actually starts is that I am going to be misplaying a lot in this video. So, if you do not like watching someone just play like a complete idiot, just click away now. It's really not worth your time. But if you like to watch someone just get frustrated by himself, keep watching. It's it's kind of fun to watch, honestly. Wretched Addict. Every ally turn on turn end, if this unit is poisoned, boosted by one. Now this is the OG when it comes to self-poison syndicate. And self-poison syndicate hasn't really helped this card being elevated to the tier that it should be at or like that CDPR wanted it to be at because the self poison archetype is really really bad like it is actually one of the worst archetypes within the game since a faction like Nilfgaard does exist and Nilfgaard is good and if Nilfgaard is good self poison will never be good and that is the basic flaw of this sort of archetype and this card as well so let's just see what we can do with this nonsense so the deck that I've built is a, you know, typical Renew Salamander list. The problem with this one, though, is we're kind of relying on Salamander to either go off in the last three turns. Best case scenario goes off in the last two turns with Gellert Blindheim being able to kill the Salamander. And we also have to find the Renew since we do not have any thinning cards in his deck. Because, like, I genuinely don't know how to build this deck. Like, I really really have no idea how to build it so i just like put in the best sort of cards that worked with it the reason why i'm running horse and freak show is because this archetype in general doesn't actually have a defined spender it has tribute spenders but when you actually have coins in the bank and no tribute to use or don't want to use a tribute you don't really have a spender or if you've used a tribute and you still have coins left over you have no card that can sort of help with that and yeah i don't really know if this deck's gonna work, probably not. It's a really, really badly built deck, I would say, but I actually don't know how to properly build this, and I didn't want a net deck, so I just thought, hey, let's just try a little go at it. Maybe I'll change a deck up after a few games and see if I can sort of improve it, but for the moment, I feel like this is probably the best thing I can do right now. I'm running Malena Des Trastamara as well because Veiled units, if they receive the poison, are actually not going to die. So things like Blindheim and the Stolen Mutagens or just like things like Back Alley Alchemist can be good. So yeah, let's just see what we can do with this deck. Maybe we can find some success. Maybe not. Who knows? We're just going to have to find out. Alright, first game is against Inspired Zeal. Interesting. Not really a common deck but we'll just have to see what we can do against it okay we have a pretty interesting opening hand we do not have the abominations which would be very nice to have in this hand we have a hideout which could actually be quite useful to be honest hideout definitely is something that can be quite powerful so let's just see what we can do. I'm probably going to start off with the Blindheim, even though Blindheim is quite nuts with the Salamander. So we get the Carrick City Guard. That's obviously not what we want to see here. I could just kill it with a Freak Show. Not sure if I want to actually do this. So I'm just going to play the good old Blindheim and then play the Salamandra Hideout so I can gain two coins off of the Blindheim for this round and maybe then get some good little value. Goes to play for the Blue Stripes Commandos. Is he going to give it the Crystal Skull? If not, we can probably just go ahead and freak show this. Alright, he does go for the Zeal play. But we can still kind of deny him some carryover. Okay, now we cannot deny him some carryover, which is obviously a bit sad. But it just is what it is right now. We do not have that many salamandra cards so we're not actually gaining extra coins off of these stolen mutagens but we're just giving a unit veil 
which obviously isn't that great. Uh, does hideout count as a unit, though? Who knows? We'll just have to find out. So we're going to pay the tribute. P tribute, obviously, is free here. So what does this actually say? If you control at least three Salamandra units. So the hideout does not count as one of these units, which is obviously kind of bad. And the only other sort of card we would have that would be Salamandra in this situation is the Blindheim, which I'm not sure I'm going to commit here. So I'm probably just going to play for the Stolen Mutagens. Could also just go Freak Show now and kill one of these Commandos. So I deny him the point value off of these Scouts, which he might want. So we're just going to do that. This is sadly a cut-up and not a Salamandra. We could also play the Azar Javid, which isn't terrible here. Goes for the boiling oil. Purifies my abomination, which is actually quite good with my back alley chemist. Giving it that extra boost. You love to see it. 8 for 4. How busted is that? Doubling up on its value. That's so broken. But we're still not on the Adrenaline 4. The Adrenaline 4 on this card is really, really kind of a bad one in this situation here. Man, if Al Alchemist was a... Sorry, it's back alley chemist. I'm just gonna call it alchemist for some reason. I don't know if this was a salamandra unit Oh my god, this archetype would actually be kind of nuts, but that's <laughs> obviously not Goes for the amphibious assault. So he's kind of pushing for this round a little bit That is to be expected here. He goes for the blue stripe scout. I'm perfectly fine with just poisoning the scout right here we have six coins in the bank and we can use the hideout here, but I don't think I want to use the hideout just yet. Goes for the reinforcements. This doesn't play for a lot of tempo, so I'm actually happy we killed the commando. So we're just going to kill this guy off. And now this guy purifies himself, so that's pretty good as well. So we can actually gain some coins here as well, but we have, as I said, no spender, which is not the greatest. So we are going to over profit here, aren't we? We could damage a unit by four as well, but that doesn't play for that much. We could also just play Blindheim here and, and finish it off with a Savola. This round at least. We could also just play the Javed. I think Blindheim here isn't terrible, so I'm just going to do that. We're going to get the nine coins here as well. That's great. But as I said, we are lacking a lot of spenders in this deck. So maybe I should just add more spenders into the deck. But I wanted the four provision slot to be these poison cards. There just isn't any other, like, good poison unit. This 11-point Carrick City Guard has also done bits for him. This is a bit of an issue, actually. I think I might actually have to pass here. It feels kind of bad. But we do have the carryover on the hideout, which is actually quite valuable. So he could just kind of like get ahead here with like a simple poison into poison. So he might not want to push us if we are playing this hideout carryover card. Okay, we have... I don't need the fist tech here. Oh god, that's a bunch of bronzes, isn't it? Okay, so I think he's going to go for the bleed here. Okay, that's fair enough. So if I use a leader charge, I could just go ahead and use Savola here. I could also just go Azar Javid now. Which isn't the worst, because it gives us three Salamandra units. We also are on five coins now for Philippa, which is pretty okay. It also puts us ahead, which is important in this situation. I also want that Fallen Rayla to synergize with my Savola. Goes for the Roach. Okay, so he's going to put out a lot of points here in a very... Sh oh, Jesus Christ, that's a lot of points. 36 points ahead. That's not great. So we're probably just going to Philippa here. We're also lacking a unit here, aren't we? We might have to go full leader into Savola now. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, we probably have to do that then. Okay, I'm just going to go full leader here with the Savola now. It feels kind of bad, but I don't think I have an option here. In general, like, I, I think I just lose here because he's just a wide deck and we can't really punish wide unless we have, like, Salamander. Goes for the Salt Kirk, okay. I mean, that's just GG at this point, right? Yeah, he just kind of wins here, it seems. Meh. So we're going to 
Yeah, we have no spender. Yeah, that's the biggest problem with this sort of self-poison archetype. Is like, we have no spenders. We only have tribute cards. Okay, so I need to kind of change the deck around having more spenders. Okay, I'm just going to do that. Alright, so here is the improved deck. I realized that I was just trying to do too many things with the first one. So now I'm just kind of trying to like hold off on like a long round with uh, hidden cash with things like Lieutenant Von Hurst, the Passiflora Peaches and the Saul. So those are pretty good cards to have in the deck. And then we just like added, you know, like we kept sort of like the four provision package, added Sea Jackal since I did feel like a spender was necessary. And also added Albertus Kalkstein since he does kind of work with this whole archetype. If we're going to go for the Salamandra into Renew Finisher, because I still want to kind of try out the Salamandra into the Renew Finisher since that is just a very interesting little play you can make in this deck. So let's just see if we can pull it off. All right, first game, we are up against the Lockdown. The mighty Nilfgaard Lockdown. Oh, God. This is where I would have loved to keep Marlene Trestevere, or whatever her name is. Because she's, you know, she's just kind of like, she's kind of good, you know? <laughs> she She's kind of good. She does seem kind of decent. Okay. So how do we do this now? I think we can play for the Abomination this round, but we have no way of actually getting coins. So I'm probably gonna get rid of the peaches. That's actually quite nice to find. The fist that gives us access to coins. Might have to mulligan another peaches, but peaches is our proactive play as well. So I'm probably gonna have to kick the chemist. Get the wretched attic. That's actually kind of funny. That is actually kind of funny. All right, we're, we're gonna go wretched attic since this is the wretched addict episode. We're just gonna give him that good old veil and then poison him with our fist tech and see where that gets us, basically. Because then we can also play the peach. This is actually kind of nice. It's, 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 it's bad, but it's still kind of funny, honestly. If I'm honest, this is kind of funny. All right, so we go for the peaches. We're gonna poison this wretched attic for... Oh yeah, I'm stupid, am I? <laughs> I'm so <laughs> so you have to... Okay, I forgot that. Yeah, 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 I'm a, I'm a bit of an idiot. I'm a bit of an idiot there. Oh god! <laughs> ah, I was so I was so like tunnel vision there. That's oh god. Oh, he's at, he has bricked uh, brigades. Didn't think that was gonna be the case. Well, bloody hell! We're both kind of in a peculiar uh, bats position here. Oh, look at the the lovely little brigades there. Oh Jesus, though. Oh, that was not that was not what I wanted there. Oh, gods. Okay, okay, okay. Um, I could go for a morale. It might just get locked, though. Yeah, this was a really... St I, I, I was, like, so tunnel vision because, like, I was trying to play around locks at the same time. But then I forgot that if I give this veil, I can't give it poison anymore. So I, <laughs> so I can't... So I, I'm really sorry about that, guys. That was a, that was a bit of a... That was a bit of a goof. Um... Okay, I mean, I have, like, good cards. I'm, I'm probably just gonna play the morale here. He's probably just gonna lock it. But he hasn't locked my peaches as well, so... We'll just have to see here. Oh, he goes for the... Okay, that's actually pretty good, eh? So, we, we kill this, obviously, now. Question is, what do I want to play here? I guess Onero into Salamander hide hideout isn't terrible. I, go I mean, I can't pass now. I guess I can go for like a ah, Kalkstein. Kalkstein into this is really bad. I feel like Kalkstein could be quite valuable. I'm, I'm probably just gonna play this Abomination here. Probably shouldn't have played it this turn, to be fair, because he can just poison it for free. Yeah, I probably could have like waited a turn here. Oh wow, his hand is dead, bro. His hand is so dead. His hand is really, really dead. Holy crap! So he denies the tribute here. I am probably just gonna play Albertus Kalkstein now. He is a good card, but like... Actually, uh, I just play Sea Jackal here, right? Purify this and then play the Blindheim just to ensure the round. Because Blindheim doesn't do much in, in a round anymore. I feel like Blindheim does not do anything for me here. Okay, we're just gonna... He's gonna pass here. This was a really badly played out round. You guys don't have to tell me in the comments. I. No, this was a really bad round for me, and I played this really badly. But yeah, no. Sometimes you just you just play like an idiot. <laughs> Sometimes you just play like an idiot. 
Ain't that the truth? I mean, the cool thing about this hand is we have two coins. Oh wait, we only have one coin in the bank. I do realize. I guess I can kick the. Oh, that's good. The roll on Blindheim is very nice. Okay, we're gonna take the Blindheim, and we can kind of just chill here, right? We play the Blindheim. That leaves us with some coins. Then we can play the other Blindheim dude. And gain some coins off of the Abomination. We have to bleed this guy, I feel like. I could also purify this if I need to, which is great. Like, Kalkstein does give us some good outs here, which is fantastic. I also like that these two can create a coin per turn, technically. But then, obviously, have to poison some units here. Goes for the Alba. That is... Yeah, that, that, that is what I expected to see here. We're gonna go for the good old Blindheim dude. And probably... Play Kalkstein next to purify this. Ah, but I do want the, the I do want the points for the Von Hurst. I don't know how many more locks he has. We haven't drawn too many like actual poison cards this game though. He invos the Blindheim. That's very fascinating. Okay. I'm just gonna play my. Do I play Kalkstein first? See, the thing is, if I play Kalkstein first. He has to deal with the Kalkstein somehow, right? So we're just gonna do this, right? Because otherwise I might go a bit too ham here. There's the ball. That is huge. We want to see that. I think I'm just gonna pass then. I think passing here actually seems not the worst. Could have gone for a hideout, but the ball is just too much of a threat here. It's basic. This card is basically a round two card that basically just says pass, Mr. Opponent. You have to pass. Like, I would, ex I, sh I should probably accept maybe going a card down to bleed out the ball and bleed out his aristocrats because his aristocrats are pretty big. But if we can draw well enough here, uh, we could definitely actually get some good value off of our salamander. Goes for the Roderick. That's good to see. Into the. This actually gives me coins, huh? This gives. Oh, this is actually huge because it gives me good carryover coins. Oh, that's actually kind of nice. <laughs> I didn't think about that at all. That's actually pretty sick. So we have good carryover coins for this Lieutenant Von Hurst to maybe even stick now. We have the Salamander in hand. We also have Renew for Salamander, so that's massive. We also have a way to kill the Salamander, which is also what we kind of need. I could just kick this Abomination here. It's kind of awkward to play. But I also want to kick the Peaches then. Oh, we get the Wretched Attic. That's so good, guys. We actually get a Wretched Addict. <laughs> He's not going to do much, but still, it's, it's a Wretched Addict, guys. He can't poison it. He can only lock it. So there's the Blindheim. I'm just going to go play you. Seems okay. So it's a three-turn Salamander. And we have to actually get the Tribute off as well. That's going to be quite a tough one. Oh, I, oh, I boost this up by a lot, doesn't he? Oh, Jesus. He's, gonna, he's definitely has a poison in hand, right? I think I'm gonna play my Azar now. Yeah, the problem with Lockdown is like we have no way of getting coins here. That's probably our biggest issue. This is so difficult. Like, this archetype is just so... It's, it's both really hard to play and it's actually not even, like, remotely viable. <laughs> That's the great thing about it. That is quite the great thing about it. Goes for the good old Slave Hunter high roll. You love to see it. Yeah, that, that, that Veiled Emperor is quite the issue, actually, though. I think we have enough Salamander units to trigger the Salamander. As well. Okay, no lock for him. I might just play Rayla here. Actually, no, I'm going to play Lieutenant Von Hurst first. Just to see what he does here. I'm going to chill and play in front row. Play around the Azar, obviously. So there's the bleed. And he kills our defender now as well. That's good. I mean, it's good for him. But like, it's still alright for us. Wait, so we actually have no way of getting the Salamander to die here now as well. What is my finisher here? <laughs> what is my finisher here? I guess I'll just try and go for the Rayla play. This is not a ideal situation, let me tell you that, guys. I think we have 
Uh, do we have enough salamander units, actually? Oh, uh, we should have probably... Uh, played the location. Oh, dude, this is so hard to play, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm also probably not playing the right deck as well. But I, I really don't know how to build this. Like, I, I, just, I'm seriously struggling to find a way to build this. So yeah, I think I go for this then. And go for the abomination. Pay that one tribute. Let's go. Get that one boost on the rail as well. That's massive. <laughs> I mean, what's his last card here, anyway? Oh, it's Brathens, okay. Oh, he has the poison. Ah, oh, that's so bad. Ah, uh, we're down by 30 here. Holy crap, how are we gonna do this? So... I'm not sure if we can actually get this off. So, we play for the Salamander here, obviously. Can we get the Tribute off? Yes, we can. Okay, that's great. Okay, okay, and we have a good old location onto the 15 point unit here, and that's not enough. Oh, actually, it's kind of close if you think about it, actually. Like, it's still like a pretty crazy combo on the Rayla here. Huh. Maybe if we had leader, this would have been uh, closer. Or if I played this a bit more correct. Alright, who are we playing against? Oh, lockdown again. Oh, this is just what it's gonna be. Just lockdowns. Guess I'll take it. Okay, hand's pretty interesting here. <laughs> oh my god. Uh Jesus. If only I had a way of getting coins here, right? If only I had a way of getting coins. If only I had a leader that gave me three coins at the start of the round. That would be quite fascinating, right? So I probably have to kick things like Saul here. I have no way of getting coins. I need to remember that. I don't think I need Sea Jackal as well then. Wretched Addict. Well, isn't this that is not great, eh? That seems to be pretty good. <laughs> I wonder if this wretched attic stays alive after I give it poison. I do wonder. I do wonder. Oh, he's just gonna lock it immediately. Okay, yeah, fair play. I guess I could then give it poison. That's that's not terrible, right? I guess he. Oh yeah, I guess he wanted to get these things out. That, that makes sense. In that case, that does make sense. I think I'm just gonna do this, right? <laughs> this is a really stupid play, but I'll honestly just- I just want- I want this wretched addict to stay alive here, guys. <laughs> I need my wretched addict! No, stop locking my stuff, dude. That's rude. Alright, we're gonna keep this wretched addict alive by giving him the drugs that he needs. Let's go, wretched addict. <laughs> god, this is the dumbest bloody dick I've, I've played in like a long time. Oh my god, this is so bad. Okay, so how many lo I mean, uh, he probably has one more lock, right? I'm just gonna do this then. Uh, I don't wanna play the- I don't wanna play the, like... Oh god, this is so diff- this is so difficult! Oh my god! You guys do not know how difficult this deck is to play, like, it, it's so ridiculously hard, especially against Nilfgaard, like, how are you gonna win against Nilf- We almost did last game, but... Oh, how do you win against freaking Nilfgaard, dude? Oh, Jesus. Okay, um... Well, that's not too bad, right? Like, we can... We can activate this. And actually deny the tribute here. And the next turn... Poison it with morale. Poison the big master of disguise here. That is probably the best line here. Oh, this wretched egg, dude, just... He's poisoned, like, oh no, he can just poison my stuff now. With with a simple coupe de grass, like, how busted is that? I, I feel like that's a bit busted, wouldn't you say so, guys? I could just pass here as well, but that means he gets round control, and him getting round control is, is not really what I want, so... I'm just gonna pay the tribute here, I'm gonna move this poison onto this master of the skies, and just kill the master of the skies here. That seems to be... Okay. Now the question is, how am I actually going to do these points? And the answer is... I don't! Huh. How did that happen? Oh yeah, he played both of his thinning cards. He found both of them. Ah, dude, this is so difficult. Rayla with Ty. I should have just passed, honestly. Ah, man. If only I had a Blindheim in this hand. So I just pass on. 
like ah uh, lockdown just I hate lockdown because like my leader ability is so good, but I can't use it ever. Like, my leader ability is just dead. At least we have ways to get coins now. That's also a problem with this deck. Like I have no ways of getting coins apart from my leader and like a Kalkstein. Weak ass Kalkstein. And maybe he, he two O's me and, and fails at the two O. That could also be an option. Okay, it goes for that. That is not a problem. I'm just gonna go do this. Imagine playing Poison in a Lockdown meta. That's just. <laughs> that's, that, that's great. That, that's great. Wait. Okay, he just plays a dead poison. I guess I'll just play my peaches here. Wait, why do you waste the poison? Like, his poisons are like free kills on my stuff, aren't they? I can just go short round for ball, right? That's also so ridiculous. Goes for Brathens, that's fine. Well, there is his points, though. I'm just gonna go Lieutenant, and then play the Abomination, I guess. I guess this is Roderick. Yeah, it's Roderick. He's, he's gonna invo. I guess he got invo. That's not terrible. So, probably just gonna go Abomination here. Get the Purification on it as well. Maybe he poisons my Abomination. Goes for the Joachim here. Does, did he not find Ball? Okay, he just plays a... That's a pretty bad Joachim, to be fair. Guess I just have to go for the Rayla now. And then go for it. Azar and hope the the Salamanda is enough. Probably not, but whatever. Oh, he goes second coup. Okay, maybe we can actually do this now. Maybe actually, I don't think we can though. Goes for a lock. What is he gonna lock here? He's gonna lock my good old peaches. So I have one Salamandra. Two. I have two Salamandra units, which gives me six coins plus one. Seven coins. That's not enough. Cause I just play Azar then. Is he actually playing his last card here? What? Why is he playing his last card? Okay, I guess because he's top decking like a god, but... Why would you play your last card here? I mean, this swings for a lot. But we did spend all of our monies. Did I even need to use the tribute there? Probably not. That was a misplay then. So... Yeah, we're going into top deck. I did not expect to go into top deck mode to be fair, but I guess we just are going into top deck mode and renew into Azar is actually kind of good. Not gonna lie to you guys. Oh, Gellard Blindheim also is actually very nice. Oh, into an Aromancy as well. This is a pretty good hand. This is a pretty good hand, I'd say. Okay, 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 okay. So we'll just go. Renew Azar. He probably top decked as good as we did. I mean, I hope for him that he did. Because then he just throws the game. Okay, that's not a Masquerade Ball. Just gonna Blindheim. Real easy, real good. And our final play might just be a, a roll on Blindheim, right? Or a back alley Alchemist. I mean, this is like, this is just the most points technically, right? And there is the ball. Uh, we're just gonna go for the Roland Blindheim. And we're gonna get the two coins, which we obviously aren't able to spend now. So let's see what his last... I mean, his last card here is Usurper, right? It's always Usurper. Is that enough, though? No! Oh my god, this guy threw this game, like, so hard. I've never... Wow! Wow! Talk about throwing a game. Like, we misplayed the absolute crap out of it, and he still managed to lose it. All right, who are we facing? Monster. Okay, this is a pretty interesting matchup. If we get last, say, gonna be quite difficult. By the way, this is such a hard deck to play. Like, <laughs> oh my god! Like, I, I can't actually believe how difficult this deck actually is to play. Like, it is ridiculously difficult. Like, it's so so hard to play. Like, really, really hard. Okay, we have the combo in hand. We have the combo in hand here. So I'm probably just going to go Hurst, right? Von Hurst. I have one poison in hand. I have technically two poisons in hand, if I'm, I'm willing to play the hideout. 
But I'm probably just gonna oh, Neuromancy into a Lieutenant Von Hurst this time round. There's so many combo pieces in this deck, it's actually kind of ridiculous. Wait, he's a Madoc deck? In Force of Nature? Is this guy for real? I guess he is. I guess my guy is just playing good old Force of Nature Madoc. I'm gonna pay the tribute on this. No idea why he's doing it, but he is doing it, and I, I kind of rate it. Nah, not really though, it's kind of a bad, bad idea. Madoc and Monsters. Wait, what? What the hell is this? What the actual hell is this? Nah, I'm just gonna do this, right? What the hell? Ah, Nicorette. I see. Hmm, problem is I can, he can easily take this out with a... Uh... What's it called? I can't let this guy win, so I'm probably just gonna do this, right? You base your contention on erroneous assumptions. This is some good value from Kalkstein that I'm getting. What is this guy playing, though? Oriana. Uh-huh. Sure, let's just kill her. Nose, mouth, any hole will do. I have no idea what I'm playing against here. Whew, this is a difficult spot. How is he gonna reach this many points? I guess he has leader. I don't want to play Azard though. I think I'm. If I pass here, that's so bad, but I think I have no choice. I think he could just take it with a big boy. But I also don't think he's gonna bleed me if he's running a deck like this. Like a no unit deck. <laughs> Monster Madoc. Seems good. So he's gonna go the card down here, unless he uses leader here. Okay, does use leader here. That's fine with me. We trade leader for just, you know, nothing actually. <laughs> Quite literally nothing. We literally just played bronze in our hideout. So, ah, and Calc actually, that nah, we, we did play the up on Hearst, but he's a bit of a control deck, so this is not terrible. Okay. Wretched Attic, the star of the episode. Yeah, he can stay in this hand, right? Okay, Black Ryla as well. Okay, so he does bleed us. I'm just gonna go ahead and... Uh, am I gonna play Morale or do I play the Azar Javid? So what do I do here? I think I play Morale. I don't know a bomb that deals 5 damage, unless it's like, Haze, but then I need a card adjacent to this. You could play like a Thunder still, but like, why would play? Why would you play Thunder with Madoc? That defeats the entire purpose of that. Okay. And goes for the bleed. I'm perfectly fine with that. I'm just gonna play my Wretched Addict. Gonna use this Salamandra hideout as a sort of defense mechanism against his red haze. Has Regis Blood. So he's just playing a full on just vampire list. Very interesting. I'm just gonna play Azar Javid at this point, right? And I'm also gonna use my leader ability here to just get some coins in the bank. Plays a bomb. So I just do this. Get me some coins. Nah, I don't want to spend these coins. Don't think I want to. <laughs> Goes for the bleed on that as well. It's kind of cute. So we can actually poison this and keep it alive because this is clearly annoying this guy. So what do I do here? I'm probably going to play Peaches. Yeah, I guess Peaches seems okay. I could also play Back Alley Alchemist, actually. That's That seems better. It's a smaller unit. It, it's not an engine. 
So he does pass. We keep this, but we do not have the Blindheim, sadly. I might want to find a Trafficker here. Or a Roland. Roland and both of these are pretty good cards to find here. No idea what his deck is, honestly. It might be like Renew into Orianna, but he's playing Force of Nature for it, so I, I, I honestly don't know. Gonna mulligan the Wretched Addict here. Keeping passive peaches seems okay. Actually, no, I need I need my I need the Roland here. If I don't get Roland. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Alright. Pay the tribute on this thing, I guess. I guess I could apply I should probably play Roland Pleinheim first then. Ah, but he might be able to deal with it like a Predatory Dive does exist in that deck. Exactly! Look at that! Predatory Dive. Who would have thought? Second... I guess that is a bit of an issue though. <laughs> second Predatory Dive is a bit of an issue. What does he have? Triss into the second Predatory Dive? That wouldn't make me very happy. I mean, we don't- we can't play for the Salamandra combo anyway. Heat wave. That's just rude at this point, right? Guess we should have just renewed the Azar. Well. What do you know? Goes for Madoc. Okay, sure. Guess we should have kept the Spender here. So what's his finisher here, though? Play the dead scarab. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, that's funny. That's funny. All right, we're playing double cross. Double cross is a bit of a. I mean, double cross can't really do much with our strategy, which is kind of funny. I mean, unless they like play for <laughs> their own salamandra somehow, but we should be okay against that to a slight extent. Got a lot of good self poison cards here. Um, I do have the hearse and the saw, which is also kind of nice. Get Salamander in hand. Hmm. I mean, hand's not terrible, right? I guess I can kick the Trafficker? Alright, Javit's not terrible. Okay, he does play TA, which is nice. So, we are just going to... I'm probably going to play my Abomination here. I want to see what he does against this. If he poisons it, that's fine, honestly. Oh. Oh, it's... Oh, it's Colgrim. Okay, I feel that. I feel that. So that's where uh, I think our Al Albert is going to be quite useful then. For the defender. Shot. Hmm. This is just going to get locked, so I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to play it just yet. I guess I go for... Go for this, right? I'll fist deck the snowdrop. Yeah, he's playing a snowdrop deck. I was I was kind of expecting that. So we're gonna go morale here as well. Onto the snowdrop. Snowdrop decks something I also wanted to try at some point, so that might be like another episode. Oh yeah, let's go Cantarella High Roll. Ah, you missed. Yeah, missed, buddy. Okay, so I'm very tempted to just play Azar Javit here. Just because, you know, the guy kind of protects this Kanta from being murdered with a coop. So we're just going to have to see if that actually is going to work out. This might also allow me to play the Lieutenant Von Hurst this round. Goes for Alba. Gets my peaches out. Love to see that, honestly. That's great. And he's also going to double cross now. Okay. So what is he? Is he a mill deck? Yeah, he has to be, right? So he's gonna purify probably one of my scarabs here to just use the coupon on his Cantarella, which I find kind of funny, but... We're just gonna play our Saul here, just chill a little bit here. We're not in a rush to really win this round. Has the Evar. That's a good point swing, I'd say. I'll just go at Hurst. Go for the passives. 
Passives are nice, aren't they, sometimes? Then we can also go for the Alchemist, which is nice on the Abomination here. Goes for- wait, he had Lacerate? Wait, why does he play it now? Why did he not just play it to kill my thingies? Oh, that's bad, because I guess he wants to set up his morale through Coop. Which actually is kind of bad. But I don't think- is he- is he a Colgrim deck? Why is he mor Okay, I'm, I'm confused here. This guy's line of plays have made very little sense so far. Ay ay ay. I just play Blindheim. Blindheim's so good though on Salamander. But Blindheim gives me the seven. The mighty seven horde. So I'm just gonna take the seven horde. Alright, take seven horde. That seems fine. Shoop! Oh, he's a Shoop deck. Okay, 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 okay. I get it, I guess. Is it Resilience? Ha 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 ha. You think your Resilience can stop me? Get out of here, Shoop. That's what I say to that. Eight points for 12 provisions. Could you imagine? Heat wave. Oh. That's not good, though. Okay, so are we just gonna win on even here? Well, obviously we aren't, but... You play the Shoop. He has a lot of stuff in his graves, in his grave, so he can assire it back. I think he's always gonna bleed me if I don't play this. So I'm probably just gonna play a Salamander here. And the Night Tribute. Feels kind of bad, but... What you gonna do? Like, yeah, okay, there goes our Salamandra strategy, and pretty much our Fallen Rayla as well. Which is just so bad. I mean, we could still Fallen Rayla and renew Salamandra, right? Salamander, Salamander. Oh, look at it. Wretched Addict. Oh, look at the points. But we're probably gonna mulligan this. Ooh, that's actually a good hand, right? What if I bleed this guy? He has a, he has such a polarized deck. I feel like bleeding him here is actually correct. This is a re oh, a squirrel. Okay, so does he banish? He did banish my salamander, which is kind of funny. But we should be able to just win here because of our point output with the sea jackal as well. He already, I think he played his tall punish as well. There just goes his. Pretty, I mean, Brathens is still good, right? But, like, I think we just have too many points here for him to deal with us. Alright, let's do this. He needs 14? I don't know what card does 14 here. Coop de Kras, definitely not a card that does 14 in this situation, so... Yeah, we get away with beating Nilfgaard! How lovely. All right, who are we facing here? Precision Strike. If this is no unit Precision Strike, we are just probably gonna lose here. But you never know. You never know, honestly. Like, it, it's, it could still be possible to win, but it is gonna be very difficult to win. Let me just tell you guys that. You could also just play uninteractive stuff as well, but... Yeah, I need... I mean, maybe like an Azar in round one could be quite funny, but also maybe not. Okay, I kind of want the Fist Tech in hand. I want to keep that. I don't think I need the Sea Jackal. Double Passiflora Peaches. If you just start... Okay, so he's a movement deck. He is a movement deck. We do kind of like to see that. We do kind of like that. That is not terrible. Okay, he plays this Witcher. That is perfectly fine with me. I can just play my second Peaches here, right? Do not mind the second Peaches here, since he's not going to get value off of Witcher for... I mean, actually, we should have probably poisoned it there. Ah, actually, no. Forcing out, like, a Rebuke out of him is also fine. Okay, so there goes another Veil unit, which I'm actually very happy with. Getting Veil units out is quite good. You can also play for Morale here, for sure. Goes for the Purify. That is perfectly fine with me. So, does he deal with poison or does he deal with morale? Both ways, he's gonna lose some points. Or he can just pass. Passing here is also an option. 
Goes for the tree end boar. That is quite a huge play as well. So we're gonna kill this with morale. And now we're gonna play the mighty. Actually, we play this first, right? Or do we play Wretched? Nah, we, we, we play this first. Yeah, we play this first, right? That seems okay. Alright, he goes for Call of the Forest. Very intriguing plays made by a Mr. Opponent. Hmm. I'll probably just go for a Wretched Addict here. I feel perfectly fine doing this. And then we play the mighty Fistic Trafficker, and that's just, ah, oh, so good. Fistic Trafficker, absolute beast of a card, honestly. Goes for a rebuke. Oh, this is making his tree end board quite huge as well. So if I go for the hideout now, I might actually just get a pass out of him, realistically. This should be a pretty easy pass for Mr. Opponent. If not, we just kill his big tree end and we're happy with that. Oh wait, this loses its poison. Oh my god, this is so bad. Ah. Oh. This Adrenaline is so weak. Huh, I didn't think about that, actually. Oh, we still, I mean, we can still have, like, we still win the round if he passes here, but... It isn't too fantastic. He Heatways one of my... Girls. Okay, I might actually, I might actually have to pass here. This is a bit scary. Oh, crap. His Dunka actually got, like, a massive bunch of carryover, but I don't think he's gonna push me with this hideout still um, being able to kill a unit or like one shot a unit. We get the Blindheim, that's great. We get the Ryla, that's great. Sea Jackal... Don't really need it. Saul's good. I guess I have a Dry Pass card in this as well. So let's just see if he wants to bleed me here. I don't think he does, so... I'm fine just taking this pass with our good old Fistic Trafficker. Now, I need two cards in this hand, and two cards are actually quite important. And those two cards are the Blindheim and the Salamander, obviously. If I do not find these cards, uh, it's not looking too fantastic. We could still like play for a bit of a control line, but definitely is the, isn't the best line to take. So we mulligan the Wretched. Okay, so we're already missing out on either Salamander or the Blindheim. So we have to keep this Fist deck for sure. In case we do find the Salamander here. And we get a Fist deck Trafficker. Which isn't terrible. What is our Renew target? Our Renew targets are all absolute garbage. That's not what you want, is it? <laughs> That is not what you want. He already played his Heat Wave, so I think my Sol actually might be saved, though. My pride. So I'll just go ahead and play the Sol, then. We also don't have a Spender here in this hand. Huh. Guess I should have kept the Sea Jackal as well. I was hoping for, like, you know, some good cards here. Oh, no, he's got the Protector. That's so good. Oh, that's really powerful. Mm, that is really bad. Mm, that is really bad. I guess I should have played Blindheim first. Yeah, I probably should play Blindheim first. I got greedy. I, I forgot that Saul only boosts up to self the five. Yeah, that's a huge misplay. Probably loses me the game. Okay, plays for that. Well, I can still. Oh wait, I can still renew Saul, right? Oh, that's funny. Do I poison this? I think I want to poison... Ah, uh, Gezra's is so good, though. I think I play Albert Kai Kalkstein before that. I mean, I am going to over-profit no matter what I do. Like, this Rayla plays for nothing, basically. Okay. He still has Justice. That is a bit scary. So we're going to go do this, then. We obviously have to roll stack here. And play Rayla next and finish it off with our good old. <laughs> Do we have those spenders? Oh, I wish I had spenders, man. He moves this, right? Wait, what? Okay. 
Oh, I love how Rayla just over profits when you have seven. It's it's so good. <laughs> it's so good. God, this card's so bad. He kills my last spender as well now. I think this was just unwinnable with our hand here. Like we missed out our two like main cards technically. Like we can't actually do anything here. We just like get outpointed. By his plays now. Like this Gaten is just friggin' ginormous. Yeah, this is a friggin' huge Gaten. I guess I should have killed this when I had the chance, but yeah, this game is just over, right? Not much I can do here. Cause like he's gonna play Gezra's next and we just lose to that. Oh boy. How big is this Gezra's? 10 point Gezra's. Yeah, I'm out. Bye bye. See you later. Okay. Guess we just suck against engine decks if we don't draw our combo. Who would have thought? All right. So this archetype in general, like this self poison archetype, I don't know whose idea it was to make every single card sort of unplayable. Like this Fallen Rayla card is so bad like don't even get me started on her salamander is a funny card but it is so bloody draw dependent on so many combo cards as well ha salamander hideout is arguably the single playable card out of this whole like package and i guess the blindheim brothers are all right especially like gellert being able to like one up on his you know fee which is okay abomination isn't terrible but it has so many downsides with his adrenaline being just kind of bad, honestly. Like, the, the card kind of doesn't allow you to do much with it a lot of the times because it is very restricted with this adrenaline ability. And, I mean, like, the early cards like Back Alley Alchemist and Wretched Attic were never good and they still aren't good, so there's that. And, I mean, all the other bronzes that they brought out for this expansion on Syndicate are just kind of trash. So, yeah... Syndicate does, like, this archetype in Syndicate definitely needs a bit of an overhaul in the sense of just change a few stats, make, make a few cards better. Like, if you just add, like, four or three points to this whole, like, archetype, it can definitely elevate it. But at its current state, it just isn't good enough and is way too dependent on combos. And with the combos also comes draw dependency as well, so that never is that great in Gwent, which is a card game that goes in three rounds, technically, and, you know, your opponent can obviously bleed out your combo early, and then your late round is not that great. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this little self-poison video. If you did, please leave a like, subscribe for more Gwent content, and I'll see you soon.